Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. I'm Paige, this is Seeking Alexandria. And guys, today we are gonna be traveling into the land of bougie with Little Miss Pat McGrath. This is the newest um, palette. This is their Midnight Sun Mothership palette. I believe it is number six. And I am really excited to dive into this because I went actually into my collection and I pulled out all of the other Pat McGrath that I have. And I pulled them all mainly for reference because with this palette in particular, I really do want to talk about the color story that we're looking at as well as the amount of product. So let's go ahead first and start talking about the one that we are here for today. The packaging on all Pat McGrath, we all know at this point, the unicarton is so beautiful. This is one of those unicartons that I try never to throw away if I can help it. There's only one that I am missing the unicarton on right here, and it is because my cat ate it. Yes, my cat actually ate it cute. Like I said, let's go ahead and dive in first to the description of this palette while you guys go ahead and take a look at some swatches. I am reading everything for today off of the patmcgrath.com website, which is where I purchased it from. And again, this is a $125 palette, just like all of the other large ones. And in the description here, it says you have 10 richly pigmented shades and seven next generation formulas to highlight, line, and define the eyes for endless luxury and unlimited looks. Elevate your artistry with captivating coppers, bold bronzes, covetable crimsons, glowing golds, and venomous violets. Violets, mix and layer to create multi-dimensional effects. Each hue releases infinitely smooth and blendable pigments with uninhibited buildability. As you will have noticed from the inserts, we are dealing with our usual Pat McGrath packaging, and I really love it. Again, very nice, hefty, luxurious feel to it, so when you are paying the money, at least it feels like you're holding something quality in your hand. Now, going through and swatching all of these, I didn't have any issues except for the dark shade right here, and that's just because when I swatched it, it did feel a little bit um, more chalky, a little bit drier than the rest of the matte formulas in here, um, which kind of is weird because typically with Pat McGrath, I don't notice that as a thing. And I'm not saying that it would apply bad or anything. Again, it's just something that consistency-wise did feel a little bit different. Now, guys, before I dive into my actual eye look, I do want to talk about this one for a second because going into this review for this particular palette from Pat McGrath, I'm kind of underwhelmed, which is very weird. Typically, as you know, as I just said, like, I have a lot of her other stuff, and I really, really love it. Again, the quality is fantastic, blendable, and just velvety and amazing. But this palette, for whatever reason, when I look at it, I am just so uninspired, and I feel like it's something to do with the combination of colors. Maybe it's because it's so baseline neutral. Like, I don't know if it's just me. I don't know if it's like the pop of blue effect, except they're doing it with purple. But if I cover that up, does this palette just look at all exciting to you? Like, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I just, for whatever reason, I feel like this is my least favorite color combination. But I did go ahead and pull all of her other palettes that I have, just to kind of give you guys a little side-by-side -side real quick. So this one over here is going to be the only side that changes as I go through these. So this one is the one we're talking about today. And this is the mother ship four palette and as you can see it had a lot more color it had a little bit of fun a little bit of sass to it now out of the rest of my collection this is mothership two and this was probably my least favorite out of all the ones that i have thus far as far as the big ones go which again i have four of them i do really really like this green kind of duochrome shade right here and i think it paired beautifully with these gold colors but for me it was just more so of a neutral with that pop again and it just didn't give me a lot of flavor to it so i do like it and i think the mattes in here are beautiful the shimmers are great but just not the one that I use the most. Now this one over here is Mothership 5, and out of all the palettes I have, I really, really liked this one because for me, it was a lot more easy to use and a lot more fun. Then this is my last big palette of hers. This is the Mothership number one palette. And for me, it's not that I don't like it. It's that it just has a lot of like cooler gray tones down here. And for my skin tone, my complexion, and how I like to kind of exist in my everyday life, gray type shadows just don't really work for me. Let's also touch real quick on the amount of product that you receive in this palette because because for me, this is something where I noticed a huge discrepancy, and I'm going to kind of go back to the original two palettes that I have, which would be the Mothership 1 and Mothership 2. Now, in each of these, on the packaging here, it indicates that you get 0.47 ounces um, total, so divide that out over 10 pans, as these are all 10-pan palettes and the larger ones right here, and that is 0.047 ounces per pan. Now, for me, that is shy of what it should be. I'm going to be extra critical because of the price tag and say that these should be at least 0.05 ounces per piece. Like, that's just my own personal thing. You guys know it. I believe that any eyeshadow pan anywhere should have a minimum of 0.05. But once you jump over to number four, it says right here that this is 0.7 ounces for the entire palette. Now, you break that out over 10, and you are all of a sudden looking at 0.07 ounces per pan. So at some point, there was a very large increase in the amount of product you got per pan. So then I went ahead and I checked all of my little palettes, which are little six-pan palettes. These are all specced, every single one of them, to have 0.42 ounces of product apiece. And what that 
that means when you divide it out over all six pans right here is that they each also have 0 0.07 ounces of product. And then I went ahead and I pulled out today's palette and wouldn't you know it, just when I glance right here, it says 0.047 ounces each. So we're back down to the smaller pan size. And I'm like, okay, and now I'm a little frustrated because not only am I not in love with the color story and all of that aspect of it, like it's not my favorite, but now I see that the pan sizes have also somehow gotten smaller again. And I'm not going to sit here and beat a dead horse. I promise I am going to jump into the eye look. But for me, that was just like a huge downfall, especially when you can look across all the rest of her palettes and see that started off small, went to a good size, stayed there for a long time. And now all of a sudden we're dropping back off in the amount of product. And I don't know, for me, that was just a big blunder. Again, just my opinion. You guys can let me know what you think down below. But you guys, the defense is going to rest on this. I promise I'm done talking about it. I want to hear from you down below. I want to know if that bothers you, if that's the sort of thing you look for too, or if it's just me. Um, but I just, for me, I'm just, I'm going to stop. But like, I want to hear your thoughts. Now that we are good and moved in here, I'm just going to take my ABH primer and prime the lids with that little devil. Diving into this, I do want to note that these come with little name cards, and I think that is so incredibly cheap. I don't like them. I don't think that it adds anything aesthetically to the palette. I understand that she's going for like this nice, clean, crisp look, but I personally would rather just have either the names here or just don't give them names at all. Just be mysterious about it. We will call this one the purple one, the green one, and so on and so forth, because girl, I got time for that name card situation business. I do not like it. So for me, diving into my first color, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to use this guy right here, and I'm going to take it on a Morphe M504. And I'm going to be taking this color, oh my word, the pigmentation. Okay, yeah. Don't even know why I would be shocked by that, because her palettes are just known for being so rich. But I'm just taking this, and I'm going to be fluffing it all through the crease here. And I'm really just taking and dispersing that color all the way through the crease. I only dunked in that one time, because I don't want this to be a very rich version of that color. I want it to be more of a veil and like a transition. Um, I just don't want to do like a super dark look today, because what I have in mind isn't very dark and vampy. It's more like nice and light with like a pop of shimmer kind of feel. Wow, that color blends like a freaking dream. Again, not that I'm surprised. The quality of her shades is always on point, but just the way that they veil and the pigmentation just goes for days. Like, wow. Guys, I have a slight problem. I think there might have been purple in my brush <laughs> because on my lids, this looks purple, but like as I'm swatching this color, it's brown. And I can't, <laughs> I can't tell what's going on here. Brush it out. Does it? It looks brown. Oh my God, what if there was purple in my brush? Oh. Okay, so I'm gonna wipe this off and, and get this far again, but with a clean brush and the right shade, and I'll be right back. Oh yeah, that's probably a lot closer to the color it should be. You know, actually brown. Mm -hmm. Good call, Paige. All right, so real quick, before I dive into the shimmers in this palette, which are by far my favorite and what I will be spending a lot of time with, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a little bit of bake onto my under eye here. All right, now with that done, I'm gonna grab my little Too Faced glitter glue here and I'm gonna pop that all over the center of my lid. Now from there, I'm actually going to play around with both of these shades, which are these two right here, this purple and then this beautiful gold kind of bronzy color. The bronzy gold one actually has um, like a little bit of glitter to it, so it has a nice chunk factor for texture. And then the purple one is a lot smoother. So I think what I want to do is I'm gonna pop the gold one on first which is, oh my word, so impactful. Almost immediately though, I am having some glitter fallout, so something to keep in mind. And I'm just going to lightly kind of blend that out with my clean finger here. You guys know I love to blend around with my fingers. And then I'm gonna take the purple and put that on the front part of the eye here. Just lightly kind of bridge the two together. And actually this is one of my favorite things about the Pat McGrath Instagram. If you don't follow it, I definitely think that you should. Um, the way that they do eye looks on there, they're just so easy and so beautiful and they're always so different and sparkly and glimmery. And I've always loved their color combinations from their own palettes. So I thought today we would kind of do a little bit of mix and match in ourselves. Now, now, over top of the center of the eye, I want to take this one, which is probably one of my favorite shades in the palette. It's almost like a diamondy topper kind of highlight, but I really, really love it. And I'm just lightly tapping it off on the back of my hand here because I want to grab just a little bit and put that right over where those two colors meet. And then I'm going to carry that up just a freckle into the brow bone just for a little bit of something different, but also just to highlight and open up the eye a little. Then I'm just taking that same Sigma E40 with no additional product and I'm just kind of using it to lightly blend all the colors together just so everything is nice and even. From here, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove my bake so we can hit the lower lash line just a little bit here. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna take one of my dual-ended old Urban Decay brushes here and I'm gonna grab this light shade in the palette. It's like a just a regular champagne kind of shimmer shade. I am going to pop that on the inner eye just because I want to see how bright it is. 
Okay, that's pretty. It's not quite impactful enough for me for an inner eye highlight. I'm going to take some of that diamondy shade and try to pop that on top. And that's a lot better. Okay, yeah. I like that combo a lot better. Now for the lower lash line though, I'm going to take that same little dual ended uh, pencil brush moment. And I'm actually going to grab the purple shade that we have right here. And I want to see what that looks like if I kind of lightly smoke that on this half of my eye so that way it's kind of going across like over here it's on the upper and then across from it on the lower lash line kind of thing and I'm just wiping that dual ended off and on the inner portion I'm going to grab that nice gold shimmer that we have out there I'm going to very very lightly kind of tap some of that right into here but I don't want it to be very rich in pigment and I also don't want to have glitter flakes go everywhere so I'm just very lightly kind of placing and then dusting it right into that purple just so it gives me the lilt of the color without being too much. Wow, you guys, that actually turned out really pretty. I enjoy that color combo a lot more than I thought I would. Like, it was one of those things that as I went into it, I was a little bit standoffish, but I really like it. Oh my God, Pat McGrath, honey, you know what you're doing. Also, real quick, you guys, I just found a little bit of a dupe. I was really thinking about it because it was driving me insane that I couldn't remember what it was. Um, This shade right here, I love it, and it has a, like, glitter kind of texture to it, and I was trying to figure out where I've seen that before. I swatched it right here, and then the one on top, which is almost identical, is actually the Supreme Fr Frost Diamond Wet Highlight from Jeffree Star Cosmetics. It has that same um, kind of, again, crumbly glitter feel to it, but it has a little bit of a base champagne pigment. The undertones of them, as you can see, are slightly different, but they're very, very close. So just something to note, if you already have this little guy right here, then you uh, have something similar to this one in the palette. But at this point, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and run off of camera. I'm going to finish everything up, and I'll be right back. And all right, beautiful people, I am back. The rest of my face is on, and I am absolutely diehard obsessed with the way this look came together. I would never normally pair that purple with that gold and I just feel like overall everything came together beautifully and I'm so so glad that I tested out that combination. I would definitely use it again. Now diving into my thoughts and kind of finalizing everything I think on this new palette. I think for me is it a beautiful palette? Yes. Is the pigmentation and everything fine? Yes. I don't have any issues there. I do like that across the color spectrum here even though it is only 10 shades there's a lot of depth that you can accumulate or you can really lighten up an eye and go a little bit more light, a little more flouncy if that's kind of what you're feeling. Today I kind of walked like a nice little mid-grade line where I wanted it to be a little bit dark but mainly sparkly and light and bright and I feel like I accomplished that. But I do feel like there's a lot of versatility in just those 10 shades in that aspect. Um, for me, like I mentioned at the beginning, is this my favorite palette from her? No. I do think that after playing with it, it is not my least favorite. I think that it's ranking somewhere in like the bottom tier but it's still not my least favorite. Now, now for me, is it worth it? I wish the color story would have been just a little bit more. Like, just give me just one more, like, lightly pop kind of color. Um, something to make this stand out just a little bit against the other palettes as far as the neutrality of it. Again, I'm not necessarily mad at this color combo now that I've played with it. I just wish there was, like, ugh, just, like, one more shade that was a little bit more out there. And I think it would have honestly won me over at that point. But I want to hear from you guys down below. What do you think of this palette? Is it something you were curious about? Did you swatch it? Did you get a feel for the texture? Do you like it? Do you not? Do you like Pat McGrath? Have you ever tried them? All your thoughts and opinions, leave them down below. And of course, if you haven't done so yet, you can check me out on Instagram and on Twitter. They are both linked in the description. Also, if you like me, you like my style, and you like the bloopers at the end of the video, you wait, they're coming, um, please feel free to subscribe, turn on your post notifications, and stick around because I do upload five videos a week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They go up bright and early between 6 and 7 a.m. my time here in northern Michigan. But you guys, that is it. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Please do not forget to have a great day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Each hue releases infinitely smooth and blendable pigments with uninhabited build. We're gonna talk about a mount. Now, Bert. <laughs> Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Paige. This is Seeking Alexandria. And guys, today we have a freaking palette. <laughs> Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Paige. This is Seeking. <laughs> Oh my god, I have the best dad in the whole world. He's brought me a fresh Diet Coke with light eyes. Dad.